A few weeks ago, I showed you how to work with a kit, and today I'm going to show you the quilt that I'm gonna make with that kit. This kit is by Charisma Horton. The name of the pattern is Sweet and Salty, and we get to use this wonderful tool, which is the Banana Split tool that was created by Charisma. So I can't wait to dive into this. This is completely out of my comfort zone. I don't usually work with solids and I don't usually work with this more modern palette, but I can't wait to get started and try it out. I did make a variation of this pattern just to test out the block because it's so important to test out our blocks. And I love it with other fabrics too. So I will show you that at the end, some of the variations that I did make. I can't tell you any of the cutting instructions because this isn't my pattern. However, I will show you how to use this tool and how to make this beautiful, beautiful quilt. So let's get started making this. Okay, everything is cut and ready to go. I have it sitting here at my machine. Again, I can't tell you the sizes, but I have all the stacks right here. I also have all of the color strips pressed and ready to go. So to get set up for sewing, because I'm gonna be sewing a whole lot of pieces together, uh, one tip that I wanna give you is to stay organized, have things separated, which I'm going to do in a moment. I'm gonna have different piles ready to go. So I'm not gonna bore you by sewing all these pieces together. I'll meet you back here for cutting with that wonderful tool. Another tip though I wanna give you is maybe not to wear black while you're doing this, especially with pre-cuts because I am covered in lint. Everything's ready, I'm gonna start sewing and I'll meet you back here to start cutting it up and assembling our block. Okay, so I have my units sewn and cut up into the units that need to make up the units for the blocks. So let me show you how the block is made before we dig into this. And I love these old antique trays, they're so cool. They work so well for organizing things and I can just stack them up. This quilt is made up of two blocks. One is this block, which we use the banana split template or ruler to make. It is also made up of this block and it goes just like, just like this actually. And we put them together and it gives this really cool look of a diagonal. Here, I'll show you going through the block. So you can see how there's that diagonal line and that's gonna really give this cool pattern when all of these pieces are together. So let's talk first about this block, this black and white one. So this is made up of four units, one, two, three, four, and there's two pairs. So there's two blocks that look like this and there's two blocks that look like this. And it's a fairly simple block to make. You don't need any special tools. The instructions are great. We have this block, and this block and they are opposites you can see that the dark is here and light light and dark and it really does give this cool effect now like i said i made this block in different colors let me show you here you can see that it's the same configuration of blocks it's just different color ways i also made the other block and more muted colors too. So it's a very versatile pattern that you can do a lot of cool things with. This is one of them. So if you don't like the bright colors or the more modern look, you can make it in other colors. Okay, so all this is is a big four patch. We have this, 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 and this. That's all it is and you sew this to this and this to this. The other block is really, really cool too. And that's this one. And this is also made up of units that look like this. And I'm gonna show you how to make these in a minute. And there are four of them together. Now the tricky part, or what I found to be the tricky part about this, is these are opposites. Even though it kind of tricks your brain into thinking they're the same, they're not. So this block, this unit of the unit, is made up of two pieces that are opposite of each other. And I'm gonna cut them and show you what I mean. So the directions tell us to cut these, all these units that you've sewn together, into a, a unit like this. And then we're going to take our specialty ruler, which is right here. This is the banana split ruler. And there's many patterns that she has that go with this ruler. It's going to fit right on one of these units. And you just lay the line, there's a line right there. You can see it's dotted. 
you lay that right on this line and you cut right along that edge. And now you have two pieces that are opposite colorway, but are the same with this smaller piece at the top and the bigger piece at the bottom. You can see that better here. We need to cut pieces going this direction with the smaller pieces up so we can make a unit like this. So to do that with our wonderful template, we're gonna take another one of these units. It doesn't matter which is on top or which is on bottom, what color, doesn't matter because you are gonna get two opposites. So we just cut one like this. We are going to flip the template over and cut one this direction. Lining up that line on our seam line. And now we have opposites. So what I did with the cutting is to keep, you know, a consistency with each set of different colors and making sure that I have some going one way, some going the other, is I split these piles in half. So I have half of these units to cut on this side and half on this side. One side I'm gonna cut one direction, the other side I'm gonna cut the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go through and cut these now and meet you back here and show you how to sew them together. Okay, so it's the next day. New shirt, got rid of the black, also got my nails done. But I also got all of these wonderful pieces cut and ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how I sew these together and give you a few tips with that because this is a biased edge. So it can be a little bit tricky. I'm also gonna to talk to you a little bit about pressing because I forgot to mention that before, exactly how that all works. So let's take a look at how this is constructed. Okay, so I have my piles here and they are going in opposite directions, but there is one more thing that I did do to separate these within each pile. So let me explain. When I made these units, I pressed to one side. So when I cut my pieces, and I'll cut this one just to show you, one of the seams would be facing up and one would be facing down. Now this is important for construction of the block, at least in my opinion, because it'll allow the pieces to nest. So what I did was within each of these piles, I separated whether they were pressed up or pressed down. So I had two separate piles within the piles of some pressed up, some pressed down, and I did the same thing for these two. That way, when I go to put these together, the seams are going to nest. So this is my four piles. And if I take one of these and one of these, we're going to stitch them together right down that edge. And you can see, because I have them facing the opposite direction, they nest beautifully right in there and they lock together. Now this is really important with this bias edge because this can be very, very stretchy and can distort the block. And I really want to do everything I can to make sure that doesn't happen. One of the other things I'm going to do to make sure it doesn't happen is I'm not going to pin. And I know I'm a huge pinner, but I don't want anything that's gonna mess with this edge. I wanna keep it as stable as possible. So I just lock them in with those opposing seams and I'm gonna stitch right along that edge. And because I have it set up like this, it's really easy for me then to chain piece all of those pieces together. And I have a few chain pieced already. You can see right here, they're put right through the machine one right after another. Because of this template and the way you make these blocks, it's kind of nice because you do have a blunt edge to go through so it's not a point that could get lost in your feed dogs of your machine. That works out really, really well. The next step is really important and it also has to do with pressing. So the first thing I do is I press this seam here that I just made and that sets the seam. And I feel like this is a really important part. It just makes a more accurate sewing in my opinion and it's a step that's so easy to do and a lot of us don't do it. And sometimes I don't do it, sometimes I skimp. The next thing I'm gonna do is slowly open that up and press it to one side. And you can see those points are pretty accurate. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and flat. And basically what we have here is a half square triangle. So I'm gonna use my block lock ruler and just make sure it's square. 
They bend pretty square though. Um, that tool is wonderful. Oh, I have some that I can cut off the edges. Not much, it's super close. So next I am going to open the seam. And I know, I know, I don't normally do that, but with all of these pieces coming together, everything is just laying nice and flat if the seams are open like in this block. So to do that, I'm going to just finger press it open. And you can use your seam roller if you have one. That's one of these things. Then I'm gonna use my iron to get it the rest of the way. And once you get it started, it's kinda easy. And I'll even go ahead of it with just a regular screwdriver and pull those flat. I also like to use my clapper. Okay, so that's nice and flat and just uh, beautiful. Points are on, looks great. So you're gonna take four of these and put them together to make this unit. And what's important is you wanna make sure these squares are out and this is in. Okay, now that we have them pressed, we can start assembling our block. And this is such a busy block that I don't get real concerned when colors are close together. The only thing I wouldn't do is put like say a red up against a red because you do want that contrast. But even that I don't think is a big deal. So the next thing we're gonna do is just make a four patch. We're gonna sew this block to this block, this block to this block, and then sew them all together. Okay, so here's two halves that are done. And what I like to do is press them in opposite directions, the center seam. So you can see that here, that way, again, they'll nest. So I'm gonna put these two together, put those seams together, and I probably will pin this just to keep it all stable and just sew a quarter inch all the way down. And you'll get a block that looks like this. It really is a neat block. It goes together really quickly uh, and it's a really spectacular result. Okay, now it's time for the big reveal. Here it is. It's all done. Well, the quilt top is all done. So this has been such a wonderful experience. It's my first time working with the solids exclusively in a quilt and that's been challenging and a huge learning experience. So the kit came with the Benertech set of strips and you could make the quilt with these strips and be perfectly fine. But I wanted a little bit more of the brights instead of some of the more muted colors that were in this kit. So I added some Kona cotton strips. One thing that I think is important to note when you're doing that, if you're going to add different types of pre-cuts together, is that different companies measure them differently. Usually pre-cuts, with the exception of batiks, are pinked on the edges. Sometimes the two and a half inches is measured to the tip of the pinked edge and sometimes it's measured to the valley of the pinked edge and you can see that here in this picture you can see the two different sizes so it's something to be aware of when you're working with it when you're mixing different pieces of fabric like this as i stated i did make a few sample blocks out of a print that i had and i really love the way it turned out I haven't sewn these together yet because I might change a few things and maybe tweak it. I'm not sure. I'm still playing with these blocks, but this one is completely together. These blocks are versatile and I did try a few different layouts that you can see here. I do love them all, but ultimately I wanted to make the quilt exactly as Charisma Horton had intended it to be made. And I am happy with the results. I'm not sure how to quilt this though. How would you quilt it? What color thread? Give me some advice. I'd love to hear from you and hear your thoughts on finishing up this quilt. I also want to give a big thank you to Charisma Horton. She did send me this kit for free. So full disclosure there. And I just really appreciative of her generosity with this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you real soon. Have a great day and make sure you take some time to sew.